I really didn't want to make this video. I think the last time I made a video like this was a Xinyan video back towards the start of my channel. And I just got roasted by everyone for it. Even though the larger like TC community and like meta community will agree with everything I said in that video, the general community does not want to hear that a new character is a little bit underwhelming or even just straight up bad in some cases, right? But with the amount of people in my personal community that have been hyping up this character, I feel the need to at least to be honest about my opinion on her based on how long I've been playing her. I'll be honest, Candace has a problem. I, uh, uh, quite a few problems, actually. I don't think they're permanent problems. I don't think they're things that are always going to plague her, but there are some things that we should talk about if you're considering pulling for her because you want her to be a good support for another character. I'll say it right now, Candace has one of my favorite designs, and I I think the heterochromia is really cool. I think her color palette is really cool, and I think the spirit shield thing is dope. I really, I, it's so unique, and I really, really want her to be good. I really do. So before we talk about the pros and cons of Candace, let me just say, if you're not doing high-end Spiral Abyss, this video probably doesn't apply to you. This video is based around people doing high-end content, things where you have to increase the amount of damage as much as you can in a short window of time. In the overworld, you don't have to worry about that, but when you get to Spiral Abyss floor 12 and you're trying to clear it, a lot of newer units make that a little bit harder or you have to play a very, very specific way to get use out of them, and Candace is no exception. If you're just playing over world content this probably doesn't matter at all pull your candace have fun you know play the character do whatever you want with her it's it, it's fine but i guess you could call this my meta review of the character yeah let's just stick with that none of this applies to you unless you're doing high end abyss so candace if you want to know what she does i'm gonna i'm gonna break it down for you i'll make a, a candace guide eventually but so her entire kit is hp scaling she has a counter like beto so you can charge it up like this uh, or you can perfect time your counter and it'll just instantly be the level two charge and deal some decent damage. Do the level one counter, it's two particles. Do the level two counter, it's three particles. And overall, like her energy issues aren't really super bad in the teams that I found that work for her. She also has a 60 energy cost, as you can see right above me. So um, that's honestly not too bad, right? And then her burst, if you don't know what it does, it also scales off of HP. It makes it so that you infuse your weapon with hydro for about nine seconds. It gives you a damage bonus on field, as you can see here. Like I said, 60 cost, cooldown 15 seconds. So it's actually not that long. And then you also get three waves of Hydro you can apply as you swap through characters. So it's actually pretty interesting. It's not like Hydro application for your Pyro carry. That's not what it is, but it definitely can proc some blooms and things like that. So real quick, I just want to show you guys uh, who her infusion actually works over. So it actually does work over Bennett. Let me, let me show you this. Drop Bennett, drop her burst, and she has the Hydro infusion. I have C6 Bennett. It works on every character, even in Bennett's burst. As you can see, they're getting some damage bonus as well. Uh, okay, now it's a Bennett burst, right? However, in Shongyun's case, uh, the cryo is actually going to overwrite. So, as you can see, we're dealing cryo damage right now. And every time we switch characters, we apply Hydro, which is actually kind of cool. But she's not going to overwrite Sino. She's not going to overwrite Xiao. Any sort of character that has that sort of infusion when they use their burst is not going to get overridden. It's just going to be... Um, someone like Bennett, uh, Kutsing, and uh, Ayaka. So there's that. Overall, like it's a really cool concept. Hydro Infusion is a completely new thing. You can play Avatar Kutsing, and you can do really cool stuff with it. There's a character that I really like to play her with, and that is going to be Singcho. Let me find him. Playing on-field Singcho is really funny. I'll have some clips playing uh, right now. Basically, you can play this like international. If you don't have Child, but you have Candace Singcho, you can actually just use Singcho on-field have him standing in Bennett's burst, which means that he's going to get the attack buff on his swords and his normal attacks, which is really cool. Uh, I had my Singchal doing like eight to nine K swords, which is ridiculous if you think about the amount of damage that is, all while driving Shang Ling. So that is really, really cool. I think that's a cool interaction. I hope that we can do more stuff like that in the future. Uh, but otherwise, to me, it seems like she's meant to be in a sort of quick swap bloom team, which we just don't have the characters for right now so yeah i mean her kit is pretty cool i like her design i like her kit the problem just comes from us not having the characters that we need and other characters performing her jobs better she's one of those characters that does a lot of different things but doesn't excel at any one particular thing except for well you know the hydro infusion which no one else can do but let's talk about that i want to talk about some of the cons of candace so in my experience testing the character uh, i tried the quick bloom thing the thing i was telling you about where you switch characters apply hydro and you you create some 
some blooms, then you can do a hyper bloom team or something with Kuki. It's it's a cool concept. I really think it's a, a super unique thing that it will be fun to play. But right now, it just doesn't work super well. Her on field hydro infusion does not apply enough hydro to justify it. And considering that her burst only does three waves of AoE hydro, you're basically not able to get that many blooms out of her. In which case, you'd just be better off using someone like uh, Tsingxia Child, Kokomi, Yalan, even like Barbara and Mona, I personally feel like are easier to do this with. And her hydro infusion has normal ICD on it, which is like, it's to be expected, right? So if you're smacking someone with hydro kutsing, you're only actually getting a hydro application once every three hits or once every two and a half seconds, which basically means that the blooms that she's getting are not as frequent as I personally would like them to be and not enough to be competitive with a lot of other characters. Making blooms happen is not the same thing as making a solid amount of blooms happen. And for that reason, she just seems like a weaker alternative in those teams right now. On top of that, as mentioned before, her hydro isn't really enough for vape. You can't really drive vape on field with her. We're gonna go ahead and do this. Xiangling burst, Candace burst. And then we can just try to apply hydro fast enough to get Xiangling to vaporize. And with Kazuha, it's fine. Uh, but now you can see that Candace is the one vaporizing, right? And what you could try to do is swap through your characters and get that wave application, but that's three vaporizes. So it's not good enough to support a full vaporized team if you're using someone like Xiangling. And obviously you can't do it with Hu Tao. Uh, it's also like you can't really do anything with Yomiya at C0 either. Now, that being said, this is at Constellation 0, right? If you go to Constellation 6, when characters excluding Candace, by the way, uh, affected by her burst, deal elemental damage using normal attacks, an attack wave will be unleashed that deals AoE hydro damage equal to 15% of Candace's max HP. Effect can be triggered once every 2.3 seconds and is considered elemental burst damage. Okay, so let me just unlock this to show you. Her C6 should be better hydro application in theory, right? So maybe maybe she works with C6. Maybe you can use her uh, like a budget sync show or something and that way she's able to be used in vape. Surely that'll work. Surely they, they haven't scuffed her in some way, like making it so that she can't even use her own C6. Surely they wouldn't do that. Anyways, watch this. All right, we're going to attack with Bennett. Get the extra waves of Hydro. Extra waves of Hydro. We have Kazuha on field. We're doing our best to get every single vape. And we're getting almost every single one. We got we got a lot of vapes. We only missed a couple. We got like a lot of vapes, right? But now here's what you have to consider. That entire time we had Bennett on field. Bennett doesn't have a Hydro damage bonus on. I'm not going to equip Bennett with a Hydro damage bonus. We need someone on field attacking. And it, it can't be Candace because Candace doesn't trigger her own C6. I, I'm not sure why they designed it that way because Candace, like it, it would actually be viable for, for some sort of, of pyro based thing. It would actually be viable, but she is not able to get use out of her C6. Okay, let me show you Yomiya now. So we're gonna do this, swirl hydro, do our own thing, do this, and use Yomiya. Surely we can vaporize all the all the right hits, right? Surely it's not too slow. Except we're not vaporizing N5 consistently. It is decent hydro application. Like I won't lie, it is decent. But we're not vaporizing N5, which is like what Singcha and Yulan both let us do. Even Kokomi lets you vaporize N5. I guess what I'm saying here is even for vaporize, she doesn't seem like she's all that good uh, in comparison to other alternatives. And unless you have C6 right now, her blooms are just not as consistent as they need to be. Now, if you do have C6, uh, it is consistent enough hydro for freeze. However, I found that with your hydro infusion on your normal attacks, it's generally not enough to keep them frozen for a long period of time. So in that case, someone like Singjaw is better, right? Or in that case, you could just use the contact orbitals or Barbara's elemental skill. I hope you guys are seeing what I'm saying about this character. It seems like everything that she does, she's a little bit worse or a lot worse than other characters that. Uh, but okay, so maybe let's let's take a step back from her hydro application, right? Let's just talk about the extra damage bonus she gives us. 20% damage bonus, right? It doesn't go up when you level up her skill. It's 20% damage bonus the entire time. You also have this, which is going to also increase uh, damage to opponents uh, as well, which, which is pretty good, right? She has a decent damage bonus. Now keep in mind, this damage bonus is only for their normal attacks. So this is basically only for Ayato and for Yoimiya. Or I mean like that, if, if you're thinking about it that way, where you just want to get the most out of her buff, it's Ayato and Yoimiya. Uh, she will buff every character that's on field doing normal attacks. But like when you think of normal attack buff, you think of Ayato and Yoimiya, right? Well, the problem is that we just went over that with Yoimiya Vape. You, you lose the N5. Uh, and then you also have Ayato who hypothetically, if you wanted to, you could use his 
his normal attacks, and that would be fine. Except for when you use Ayato, his elemental skill cooldown is only 12 seconds, uh, which is just long enough for you to rotate through your supports again and re-up them and then get back to his elemental skill. Yeah, and, and I know his elemental skill counts as normal attacks. That's not the problem. What I'm saying is that the Hydro Infusion itself gets uh, is basically useless at that point, right? So let's just say hypothetically you wanted to use those two together. All right, so we're going to use Ayato's skill. We're going to use it until we run out here. And then we're out. Kazuma, burst. You do this. Do this. Q, maybe. Switch back. And now you just go right back into Ayato slashes. And, and the thing is, when you're doing that, the, the Hydro Infusion becomes basically useless. A lot of people are like, oh, it'll work because it'll give him Hydro Infusion on his normal attack. So you can just do this. He'll get decent damage. You don't have time to do that. In, in a solid rotation with Ayato, you don't have time to go through and, and then start normal attacking. So basically, the only benefit you're getting out of Candice is, is you're getting the Hydro Resonance and you're also getting the 20% damage bonus. Now, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Uh, you might know her very well. Her name is Yunjin. Yunjin is adding a lot more damage to your Yomiya and your Ayato than Candice is. It's like a pretty decent amount of damage right if you're going to run a support character they have to bring something to the table that makes it worth losing another damage character the reason you bring bennett is because he gives you heals and because he gives you a massive damage bonus and because he can battery shang ling if you're using a, a shang ling team right those are the three things he does that makes him more worth using than just throwing in another damaging unit in yunjin's case she can add enough attack to a yomiya team or to an ayato team to where it could actually be worth it however candace in her case does not add enough to either one of those teams to be worth replacing another damage dealer or to be worth replacing Yunjin. Like if you want to just play the character, sure, that's that's fine. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about optimizing Abyss. And what is a character's worth when you bring them into the hardest content in the game? In theory, does she work? Yes, right? You're missing N5 vape on Yomiya, which is not as good, but she is bringing you a damage bonus on your normals, which overall, at the end of the day, is a positive. And to be honest, it's not all negatives. You know, Canvas actually does a couple things fairly well. They just turned over. I'm going to go farm her talent mats here later. I'll be honest, her personal damage is not too bad. I don't think that it's it's that bad. Maybe uh, someone in TC will tell me I'm wrong or I'm an idiot for posting that, but her personal damage is is not actually that bad. I've, I've noticed that her counter can hit pretty hard. And overall, I think that's a plus. If you're going to have a character that doesn't support as much as other characters, I think they need to do a little bit more damage. The downside is that if you want to use her on field, which again is not like the most optimal way to use her, but if you want to, uh, you don't get any value from her c6 really as much right you like you don't get the extra waves so uh it's not as solid the other thing is that her damage bonus is decent right the the damage bonus you're getting from this and her burst is is pretty good it's not on the level of other dedicated supports we have you would run yunjin or bennett over her in a heartbeat but it's it's there and it's it's not the worst thing in the world she's also the only character that infuses hydra which we've talked about before but that's a really important thing to think about is is she brings a completely new utility to the table. Now, something that Hoyoverse has done, I'm gonna get called Copium for this because God forbid someone play a character they wanna play, but Hoyoverse keeps releasing characters that are good a few patches down the line. It makes my job as someone who's not supposed to cover leak TC very difficult. <laughs> but they've, you've seen this with quite a few characters, right? They released Yaimiko, who was like just a fine unit. Uh, now with Aggravate, she's a lot better. Kuki Shinobu, uh, now people are pretty happy with Kuki Shinobu, right? And I have a feeling that Candace may actually be meant for Nilo or uh, another character down the line. I don't think that she's meant to be played this patch with her full kit in mind. It's really hard to say, but this does genuinely feel like a character that's ahead of its time. I feel like she's likely meant to be played in some kind of quick swap bloom team. And I'm not saying that's off the table right now, but I definitely think that there's going to be characters in the future that are probably better for this than the ones we have on the current roster. Overall, my first impressions of Candace is that she's not like a badly designed unit, but right now she doesn't bring enough to the table to justify using her in any sort of like meta comp. She's not a good substitute for most meta things. The the way I see it, it's kind of like if you have any five star hydro character or sync shell, she's not worth using. That, as much as that sucks to say, she did not leave very good first impressions on me. And as far as I can tell, most other TC people I've talked to have been in the same boat. That being said, I don't really care if you play the character. If you want to play this character and, and you don't like my words, it, I'm, I'm sure many of you are not going to like what I had to say about Candace, and a lot of you are probably going to be like, well, Brax, that's dumb. Just play her like this. There are ways to play her. 
It's mostly that she doesn't do anything that is an upgrade for any other teams except for, you know, the Hydro Sync Shell. She does have this synergy with Kazuha. If you want to play this Hydro, like a Bloom Kazuha, Hyper Bloom Kazuha, uh, it, it's pretty cool, but I haven't found it to be personally like super strong. Um, and it's just another one of those things where it's a fun little gimmick to play, uh, but it's not something that's going to be super game changing. It's not going to be something like super new to the table that, that we were all kind of hoping for, especially with this design, right? Like she looks so cool. So personally right now, I, I won't lie. I am hopeful that she will be a lot better once we get a couple new characters in the game. Cause that seems to be the, the direction they've been taking with a lot of characters is like, this character will be better later. Um, and I think Sino is in a similar boat. I think Sino is actually like pretty good, but we just need a character that applies Dendro on field longer. So as soon as we get that, I don't know, maybe Kusanali, that could be pretty good. But yeah, anyways, you guys, I just wanted to make this quick video to give my first impressions on Candace. I will be making a guide on her, but right now it's kind of hard to find teams uh, that are really worth using for her outside of if you just want to play her. But I have faith that we're going to discover something later with some weird like nutty mechanics or maybe we'll just get a better character later on that works really well with Candace. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support you guys. And uh, I, I really am hopeful that this character will get a lot better. Just right now, she doesn't bring anything super new to the table that we can take full advantage of. If you guys enjoy my videos, make sure to subscribe down below. I think only about like 20% of you guys are subscribed. Uh, it'd be super awesome if we could get that number up, you know, get that up to like 50%. I want like, actually, you know what? I want that 100%. All of you guys subscribe. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you after the move. See you later.